Ah, ravioli. With 5 million copies of Monster to Rise sold, there is bound to be people that are confused by all of this. Are you foraging or upgrading? So here it is, my no bullshit guide to your weapons, armor, and skills. I'll do my best to cover everything, but let's face it, I make memes, not guides. So if I miss anything, please forgive me and put it down in the comments. A lot of people don't realize, but a huge, huge chunk of Monster Hunter is spent navigating menus and building weapons and armor sets. So we're gonna cover the majority of what you see in the smithy menus and what the heck it all means. And I'm talking basics here. I won't be going into details on weapons or skills too much. I just wanna help out all the beginners who look at this and go, what the hell is even that? So you walk up to the smith, you're like, hey man, I got these parts from Kezu's dead cousin over here. Can you make it into a weapon for me? Inside the forge and upgrade weapon menu, you're given the choice of another menu for each weapon in the game. This is nice and easy. Just pick which one you want and... Okay, so yes, the weapon tree is kind of scary at first, but it really is quite simple. On the left, we see the monster each weapon's path comes from. And if you follow the white lines, it'll show you exactly what path you need to take to get to what weapon you want to make. For example, starting with the Kimura hammer, we can upgrade it once here, and then we open up to the Rogi hammer tree and the fire hammer tree. If you see this yellow icon here, you can roll back your upgrade and actually get your upgrade materials back, but not the money you spent. And this isn't available for all of the weapons, so still be careful with where you're spending your materials. The last couple things here would be more of the tree unlocks the more new monsters you hunt. So if you're wondering what this question mark over here means, it's exactly that. Keep facing new foes and your list will expand. And you can also use the weapon list tab to see all the weapons in a handy list or the upgrade list so you can see what weapons you have that are currently upgradable. Oh, and I guess I should mention that this little icon here that looks like a chest means you already have that weapon crafted. Oh, and any weapon with this icon means that you can craft it right away without following the upgrade path. It costs a little more material, but you don't have to upgrade a whole bunch of different weapons to get there. And this one means the weapon is craftable, but you don't have enough money to craft it. And these ones show what type of weapon it is, whether it's water, fire, ice, whatever. And that's really it. I know it looks scary, but just follow the white lines and keep tabs on what monster the tree comes from, and you'll be forging weapons in no time. Okay, meme break. Today your ass is gonna die, bitch. Now let's chat about what the hell any of this means. All right, so let's use the Magnamalo hammer for an example. First off, here's a preview of the weapon you're trying to make, duh. And below it is the materials required to make said weapon. If the weapon says upgrade material types down here and a monster's name, it means you will need additional materials from the mentioned monster in order to upgrade your weapon. In this case, we need 10 points worth of Magnamalo materials. And then of course, we need some funds to forge the weapon. Now all this shit over here is the weapon stats and features. First, we have attack, which obviously determines how hard you hit the monster. This is known as your raw damage. If it's highlighted green, it means it's got more attack than your currently equipped weapon, and if it's red, it's got less. We then have our sharpness level. The higher the sharpness, the more damage you'll do, and the less likely you are to bounce off of monsters when attacking. The farther you get into the game, the tougher the monster's skin is going to be, so you want better sharpness as you go. Red is bad, orange is bad, yellow is pretty much bad, you want to be using green or higher as soon as you can get it, and any time your sharpness depletes past that green meter, definitely sharpen your weapon. And just in case you didn't know, it's this little icon here on your item bar. It should always be there and you have infinite uses of it. Also, quick fun fact, you can ride on your dog and sharpen your weapon while moving. So keep that in mind because it can help you out a lot in hunts. Anyways, the sharpness levels go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and finally white sharpness. You'll probably have green for the majority of your low rank playtime and even into the beginning of high rank, so better sharpness comes with time. Just be patient. And keep in mind, a weapon with high raw might not always have great sharpness, and with yellow or lower sharpness, your attacks won't be doing as much damage. So I highly recommend finding something with a decent chunk of green sharpness to use until you can get some higher level weapons. Next up we have the weapons element, which can be a whole number of things like water, fire, thunder, or even ailments like blast, poison, or sleep. The number over here determines how potent it is. Each monster you fight will be susceptible to different elements or ailments. This gets a bit complicated, faster weapons like dual blades tend to depend more on high levels of elemental damage, where slower weapons like hammer favors high levels of raw. 
so slower weapons typically aren't used for elemental builds. In the earlier stages of the game, elemental damage doesn't matter too, too much, so just find something with decent raw and sharpness and have fun. Basically, get comfortable with whatever weapon you're using, and later, once you're more used to things, you can start experimenting with elemental damage and that sort of thing. If you do want to delve into elemental damage, your Hunter's Notes has very detailed info about what hurts a monster most. All right, moving down the list, we have Affinity. This is a lot more simple than it sounds. In Monster Hunter, you have the chance of doing critical hits. Positive Affinity increases the chance of these hits and amplifies these hits by 25%, whereas Negative Affinity does the exact opposite. If you have, let's say, 50% Affinity, that means 50% of your hits are going to be criticals. If you have 100% Affinity, every hit you do on a monster will be a critical hit. So keep that in mind when you're picking your weapons. For example, the Tigrex Hammer has nice raw for the early game, but has some negative affinity. There are skills that can be used to affect your affinity to balance this kind of stuff out, so eventually when you start unlocking those skills, you can start using those weapons that actually have that negative affinity and just use skills to cancel that out. But like I said, let's keep it simple for now. So next up is defense bonus. This one's simple. If your weapon has defense bonus on it, it adds to the total from your armor and the monster don't bunk you as hard. Typically, this is just a nice bonus. I wouldn't rely on trying to use weapons with defense bonuses just to have more defense because they often take a hit in the raw or sharpness department and it's usually not enough of a defense boost to make a real noticeable difference. Again, there are skills that you can use later for defense boosts. And finally, we have available slots. These slots can be used to insert decorations that will increase your skills levels. So speaking of which, let's talk about armor. Oh, wait, nope, there's four more pages to go through on our weapons here. Honestly though, most of the info in these tabs we can ignore for now since we're talking weapons and not armor. So on tab number two, we see a little description of our selected weapon, and below this we see rampage slots. Rampage skills are basically permanent buffs you can assign to your weapons from the ramp up weapons menu. You can select the set rampage skills menu, pick the weapon you want, and pick the rampage skill you want. All you gotta do is spend the necessary materials. It says exactly what each ramp up skill does right down here, so it's nice and straightforward. Ramp up skills are unlocked a little bit into the game, so if you don't see it yet, don't panic, just keep playing. So back to the weapons here, we see that it's got one rampage slot denoted by the white dashed line, and we see the available rampage skills for the weapon. Nice and simple, all laid out for you right there. And that's it, the rest of the pages we can actually ignore for now. So there you go, that's the basics of forging weapons, and what the f all this means. Next, let's check out the Forge and Upgrade Armor menu, arguably more confusing than the weapons. First off, you can forge armor. It gives you a nice list of everything available to you and what materials you need to craft your armor with. You'll see a preview of the armor piece you're about to make and the material and amount of money you need to spend to craft the armor. Typically, it'll say the name of the monster that the materials you need come from, and if it doesn't, a quick Google search should tell you where to find the material you're looking for. You can also use your Hunter's Notes from your pause menu to see all the drop percentages for any given material you're looking for, as long as you have gotten the material before. Hitting the X button over the icon on the far left or over top of any individual pieces of armor will give you a preview of that armor, as well as give you a look at what your skills would look like if they were equipped. Using this function, you can basically select different pieces and build your armor set without actually spending any money or materials to build the pieces. So we're going to quickly cover the armor basics before we get into the whole skill thing. In our equipment tabs over on the right, we see the armor level. This should always be level 1 if you're forging a brand new piece of armor. Once it's been forged, you can use the upgrade armor menu to increase the level and defense of any given piece of armor using armor spheres. Next up we have defense. This is exactly what it sounds like. It shows how much defense the piece of armor you have and this works in the same way as your weapon. If it's green, it's better than what you currently have equipped and if it's red, it's worse. We then have armor slots. This works the same as your weapon. These can be used for decorations to increase your skills levels. Decorations can be forged from the decorations menu. Just make sure you have the materials needed and you're good to go. So next up we have our resistances. Now as you can see the Kimura headpiece has one resistance to fire. 
each piece can have a positive or negative resistance to elements, and much like how we can deal elemental damage to monsters, they can deal it to us. So if you're hunting a fire-breathing dragon, you might want to keep an eye on your fire resistance. Your total defense and resistances are added up between all of the armor you're wearing, so you definitely want to be upgrading all pieces and not just a few. A quick side note, when you eat a meal, you can eat for skills that increase your elemental resistances to help negate any negative resistances your armor might have. Once again, these special menu items do unlock after a little bit of playtime. Just make sure you're doing the quests from the Dango Girl herself. So if you look here, I've selected to preview the whole Kimura set, and if I look at page 3 of the equipment menu on the right, I see that this set gives me 6 defense, 8 fire resistance, and 3 resistance to all the other elements. Easy peasy, that's pretty much it for armor. One handy thing to keep in mind, if you preview the armor piece or weapons you want and then press Y and select add to wish list, you can add all of those pieces of armor to a handy list that will alert you when you've collected the materials needed to craft your wish listed armor or weapons. You can also look at your wish list from your pause menu to keep track of what you're trying to build. So you can get your whole armor set that you're trying to build onto your wish list with just a couple clicks of a button. All right, we're only 10 minutes and 43 seconds into the video. Okay, geez, this is getting long. So let's try and get through this and talk armor skills. And once again, it may look overwhelming, but it is simpler than it seems. So let's scroll to page two of our equipment window. Here you can see what skills your currently selected armor piece has. The Kimura headpiece I have highlighted has level 1 Divine Blessing, a skill that gives you a chance of taking less damage from monster attacks. If we click in our right thumbstick, we see a description of the skill. So using the X button to preview our current armor, we can basically put together an armor set with the skills that we want. We can see all of the skills we have equipped on page 5 of our equipment screen, so from here you can build a set with the skills you want to use just by previewing each of the pieces of equipment. It will even show you in green what skills you are gaining and in red what skills you are losing if you were to change to a different piece of armor. You can also click the right stick in and press the R button once to look at the equipped skills tab to see a breakdown of what skills you currently have equipped to your hunter. Basically, if you're confused about any of the skills, click the R button and it'll show all of the information there for you. Now, a little bit of skill insight. Typically, you don't want to have a single level of a bunch of different skills, but instead pick a few that work for you and max them out. Of course, there's a lot of nuance here and it'll take some time to learn what skills suit your weapon and playstyle best, so I recommend making full sets of armor from different monsters and trying them as opposed to diving in headfirst into mix sets. This just gives you a nice way to try a bunch of different skills out, as well it gives you a bunch of different pieces you can eventually use for your mix sets. So that's basically it. That should be more than enough to help piece together the puzzle that is Monster Hunter menu management. We won't be going over actual skills here, I'm not big enough brain for that, but most of the information is in the game anyways, and I'm always in the comments to help if you have any extra questions. Like I said back at the start of the video, if I missed anything you think is important, let me know and I'll leave it in a pinned comment so that people can see any extra info that I might have left out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to help support me, definitely share this video with someone. Go watch some of my other videos or like, comment, subscribe, do any of that usual YouTube bull honky. I appreciate you guys being here and watching all the way to the end, and I will see you next time.